I want us to try to do a similar exercise than we did um, that we did uh, to similar to what we did in our uh, previous lesson. Um, so we want to try to find what is uh, similar and make very obvious what is different. Uh, so things that are dif similar, and that's why I actually made this code very repetitive and vague. Actually, you could have made this much simpler, right? Because you could have written just a single branch, a single conditional, and then you would put or, uh, and you would say either this is false. Um, you could say uh, the only way for this to run is that uh, funk is not false and uh, left-hand side is not false and the right-hand side is not false. Uh, and then you would just run uh, all this, right? Uh, otherwise, you would return false, right? So this would be a quick way of kind of cleaning up this code, right? But that is just cleaning, hiding away actually an opportunity for refactoring. So what I want us to think about is Let's maintain this ugliness and instead try to refactor it. So what do we see that is uh, repetitive here? Well, what we see that is repetitive is that we're always assigning, we're computing something that may fail. And what we do is we always assign it to some variable and we check if that variable failed or not, right? If that computation failed or not. And if it did fail, then you just return the failure. Otherwise you continue. Okay, so now let's try to refactor that. Okay, so I'm going to do define a handle error, right? So I'm going to take some code, O, um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do check if this O is an error. If O is an error, then return false, okay? Otherwise, I want to run, I want to represent this else, right? So I'm going to do else, okay, but how do I write this, the rest of the code? Well, I can have a function here call it continuation. Okay, so what do I want to communicate to the to the rest of the code? Well, I want to uh, pass the value, right? Because this is what I'm assigning to my uh, temporary variable, right? Uh, the function is then eventually used in the continuation. So this needs to be communicated. How do we communicate it? Well, we call um, the continuation and we pass the value to it. Pretty simple. Okay, so now we have this code. And what we're going to do, let me see if I call this handle, ah, so predictable, handle error. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this code uh, and I'm going to call handle error instead and see how it looks like. So first thing I need to do is I need to do handle error, right? And I want to call, return the value to it that may have a false. And then in the continuation, I want to write a lambda that takes my function and then does something, right? So then what do I want to do? I want to do s the same thing, handle the error. Okay, I want to handle the error. Handle the error of uh, this whole thing, of the first parameter. Okay, and then I do another lambda, and I take left-hand side. Finally, I want to do the same for the right-hand side. So I'm going to handle the error. Of the right-hand side. And now I do another lambda, right-hand side. And finally, I call my function. Okay, now I can comment this out. Let's see if this still works. Everything worked. So I ran all these tests, they all passed, which means the whole code is still running properly. So what I did was I created this function that abstracted away the continuation of what's happening next. And in turn, I always do the error checking I encapsulated that behavior in this handle error. Uh, and then I use this lambda as the continuation that takes the value. And the value is the result of evaluating this. The nice thing about it is that I've removed all this branching. And now I can just look at what's happening 
uh, directly, a bit more directly, right? Um, and now I ask you, have you ever seen this pattern before? Of course, if you remember yesterday's lesson, the answer is, pause the video, resume the video. Yes, of course, this is bind, right? Um, I've already done this. So where have we seen this? Uh, well, yes, it's it's our bind operator that we learned in our last lesson. Essentially, what we have before in a previous lesson, I showed you effectful operations. And here, what I'm showing you is that you can do a similar, you can look at errors as also a way to, um, you can also, sorry, you can also um, encode this handling of errors with monads, with this functional pattern. Um, so if you understand it as an assignment, you can think of it where I'm assigning the result of evaluating this to func, and then assigning the result of evaluating this to arc, and assigning the result of evaluating this second one to the argument too. Finally, I'm calling it. Okay, uh, so this is simply three assignments, and there are some errors that may return if any of these things fails. So, what we can do is we can use uh, this idea of monads that I introduced before. Uh, in the previous lesson, uh, that notion of monad is known as a state monad, and this one is known as an error monad. Uh, its definition of bind can be uh, seen as follows, what I've implemented. And the other operation is the pure operation, and that is just um, returning the value itself. Monads were introduced by Philip Wadler in 1990, in the programming language Haskell, and they've had a major impact in um, this idea of, um, imp uh, sorry, state effect free or side effect free computations. Um, yeah, and then if we use this notation, the macros again that we learned, ignoring what it does, and simply renaming from bind to handle error, we can rewrite our code in just this simple way. Okay, where we assign the evaluation of the left and right side, assign the evaluation of the right hand side, and everything will work correctly. So let me do that real quick. Okay, and I'm copy pasting it. Fix the parentheses, hopefully. Yay, everything worked. Because this is, all, again, equivalent code. Now much simpler, much neater. Uh, and we know that inside this do uh, block of code, there may return some exceptions. And we know that because we created the macro. So the macro abstracted away the, um, the syntax, right? Or, or cleaned up the syntax a bit. But essentially what we have is we're evaluating an expression, assigning that to func, arg1, arc2. Finally, we call it. If any of these arrows uh, throws an exception, the whole thing returns exception. False. The whole thing returns false. Okay. So now in our next video, what I want to show you is something even a bit more exotic, which is looking at monads as a form of uh, expressing list comprehension.